Everyone talks about data-driven manufacturing, but to take effective decisions with the data, you need to take into account the human in the loop. We're at the MC2 conference in Chicago, and our guest this morning is Athalan Vijayaraghavan. Athalan is the CTO of System Insights, and he just finished up a compelling general session remarks. And Athlon, there were a few things that you noted that the crowd really picked up on. But to take a step back, what was it that drove you to start System Insights? What need did you see that wasn't being met, and, and what was your primary focus? Um, yes, yeah, so I was I was a grad student at, at UC Berkeley when MT Connect was being developed um, back in 2006, 7, and 2008. And um, I was part of the team that that launched MT Connect. Um, in, in 2008, and I was focusing on how do we apply all of this data in, in solving real manufacturing problems. Mm -hmm. And um, when we launched MT Connect, there was just there was um, there was a great um, appreciation for what the standard um, was doing, and, and really there was a there was lots of um, there was a desire to see the value of the standard to be realized. Right? How do we now take all of this data, and how do we really start making decisions off of the data? Um, and we looked around, so I, I started the company with, with Will Sobel, who was the chief architect of the MT Connect standard, and um, we looked around and there was no one doing that. So we felt, cool, we understand the data, we understand manufacturing, we understand technology, so let's do it. And your primary customer is the end user, not necessarily the builder of the machine? Um, yes, our primary customer is the end user, um, but we work with um, builders as well. Um, we work with you know folks um, across the manufacturing continuum, um, not just the end users, because really, with the data we're talking about, there's value for everybody you know, who is part of the system. Now, you spend a lot of time on that in your remarks today. You talked about the need to take a more holistic view mm -hmm. of, of manufacturing data, and you called it the grand challenge, the mm -hmm. process of traceability. Mm -hmm. Could you summarize that for us a little bit, what that grand challenge involves? Uh, sure. So. First of all, the reason um, I like to call it a grand challenge is that it kind of helps refine everyone's thinking to think about one big problem to solve as opposed to many smaller problems to solve. This problem will require many people to solve it, but it's still, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's a way of focusing on, on a one big thing. Um, so process traceability is being able to track and reason over the flow of data and information in a manufacturing system. So as a part gets made, um, how does the part gets made? What are the decisions that are taken as the part gets made? And um, how do we analyze everything that went into making a part across the entire manufacturing system? So we're not talking about just tracking the part itself, saying that the part was here today. It's to understand how was the process executed as the part was made. So that, that capability, the ability to reason over the manufacturing process of a complex part across its entire supply chain, across its um, across the, the manufacturing life cycle, that is process traceability. And it seemed as if it was a two-way flow of data also, because you talked about perhaps uh, a part that was produced out of tolerance. What was its actual effect maybe on miles per, per gallon or something like that, and then feeding that back in? Yeah, ab absolutely. So one of the, the holy grails of manufacturing is how do we tie what's happening in the shop floor with what's going to happen when the part is being used, and how do we tie in what's happening in the shop floor with how the part was designed. So to be able to go back in both of these directions, we need to be able to capture and reason over the manufacturing data. So if I had very detailed data on how the part is being made, I can estimate using that data what kind of performance will that part give me as it's being used. Mm -hmm. So to be able to have flow happen in either direction, we need to have this rich manufacturing data, and that's what process traceability will give you. And, and you, you spoke about that in some key areas. You talk about structured data, mm -hmm. unstructured data, and mm -hmm. I think the one that got most people's attention was tribal knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because when we have this grand conversation about data, we lose sight sometimes yep. about the role of the human, and, and you spent a great deal of time on that. So structured and unstructured are traditional ways in which um, you know um, data is organized. So sensor data, structured data, um, unstructured data is you know annotations, um, alarms, um, uh, any any um, quality data, test data. All of that is unstructured data. But the interesting data is data from 
um, the person who's operating the manufacturing process. So how do we capture that information? How do we quantify that information? And how do we relate that information to everything else that's happening in the manufacturing system? Because at the end of the day, um, you know, sensor data that is only based on what's happening in the process, that can only tell us so much. What we really care about is data pertaining to decisions that have been made by somebody with a ton of knowledge right at the machine. And all of the data we're capturing, um, you know, really has to be placed in the context of what decisions people are making. And, and finally, once you analyze the data, you have to present it back to the people in a way that they can make even better decisions. Right. So, so that, that's where tribal knowledge comes in. Now, early on in your remarks, you brought up on screen IOT versus IOMT. I think, uh, IOMT, excuse me. And I think we all know what IOT is. We hear about it a lot. But the IOMT, is this a, coin, a phrase that you coined? And, and what does it represent? Yes, so, so the IOMT is the Internet of Manufacturing Things. So um, we, we came up with the phrase to help refine focus on our piece of the problem. Um, we also thought, hey, you know, let's see if we can make up you know, an acronym of our own and see if people will pick it up. So hopefully this, this interview will make that happen. <laughs> but, but, um, but on a more serious note, IOMT helps us focus the whole conversation about you know, Internet of Things on what it means to be making decisions in a manufacturing context. Mm -hmm. So when we say manufacturing things, we mean the various aspects that are per pertaining to, to the manufacturing process or the manufacturing system. This could be people, this could be sensors, this could be processes, this could be equipment, this could be tooling. Um, so there are all of these aspects to the manufacturing process. So what does it mean to have IoT scale analytics applied in a very focused manufacturing context? So that's what we mean by IOMT. Well, Athlon, thank you very much for being here. You always lend a lot to the MC2 conversation, and we look forward to hearing more out of you over the next couple of days and in the conferences to come. Thanks, Bill. Looking forward to it. At the MC2 conference in Chicago, I'm Bill Herman for IMTS-TV.